Today we're taking XPS foam, 3D printed bits, and a bunch of shit I got from the dollar store and slamming them all together to make an awesome piece of wargaming scenery. So I'm Anders and let's talk some hobby. This all started a couple of months ago when Albert, also known as Microforge Minis on Instagram and one of the hosts of the Two Towers podcast, asked if I'd like to take a look at some sampled pieces he'd made for an upcoming Kickstarter. Considering I do love his work and also free stuff, I of course said yes, and he sent over a box including a whole bunch of things. The main being these 3D modeled pieces. Basically, these are a collection of windows, doorways, and other stuff that he's modeled digitally to be used along with more classical crafting techniques to build highly detailed wargaming pieces fast. The campaign is live right now, so take a look, but my biggest question was whether these would work with my favorite material, Dollar Store Foam Core. And yeah, it's not perfect, but these sheets are roughly 5mm thick, so two of them fit pretty well into the slot, albeit with a bit of wiggle room. And so with that figured out, what are we going to build? Well, there was only one answer for me, and that was Arnor. A couple of videos back, we built an Angmar wash tower as a little test for what Angmar terrain might look like, so I decided to do the same with Arnor. But where do we start? There's no single vision for Arnor that I'm in love with, and I didn't want to do just more Gondorian looking stuff. So I went looking for inspiration elsewhere, and ended back with everyone's favorite thing, Rings of Power. Specifically their look for Numenor, which I really loved, as it integrates a lot of colors while pushing the Romanesque style that was already present in a lot of the Gondor stuff from Weta. So with that sorted, I did up a few sketches, got some ideas, and jumped right in by cutting up some strips of foam gore to eventually become walls. I decided to base the whole thing on the same wooden squares that I used for my Cursed City building, but instead of making them flush to the edges, I measured out and marked the center of each side and drew lines between them. This is where I'm planning to have the walls, as I'm going to try and integrate a design element I've seen in real life architecture. A lot of churches are made in such a way that they're actually built in the shape of a cross, as that's like, a thing I guess, in religion. So since the main sigil I use for Arnor is the Star of Elendil, I wanted to try and make the base of this building an eight-pointed star. So I cut the walls to length and glued them together in sets of two, just using some PVA glue. Next we start by adding texture to them, and that's where we need to break out another thing that Albert has sent along, which is a set of MDF kits. All the parts pop out and slot together perfectly with or without glue, producing a full set of rounded jigs for cutting out doorways to fit the 3D bits, and then this piece, which may just be my favorite. This is basically for drawing brick lines into foam, where you just slot your foam piece in and run your knife along it, and it works great. There's some nice variation to the size of bricks, and in my case I actually skipped the first couple as I wanted there to be a big panel at the bottom, but did all the rest. With those cut, I then went in and added the vertical slits for the individual bricks, widening the lines with a pencil as usual, and then added texture with a rock. I then grabbed this big archway piece and used it to cut the shape into a single piece of foam core, which I plan to use as a piece to accentuate the doorway. Speaking of which, I used another jig to cut out the doorway, which slid in perfectly. Then it was time to assemble all these pieces together with more PVA glue, and some small nails which I used to temporarily pin them together. After waiting for them to dry, I removed the pins with some clamps and then carefully sliced off the corners that were overhanging the base, which left these flat sections. This is where I plan to start the whole star pattern thing. The last thing that Albert included in this box is some of this nice XPS foam that's specifically the right width to fit his pieces. It's also the kind of foam we don't really get here in Canada. Ours is more of that pinky stuff. 
So I wanted to give this a shot and decided to use it for some of the details. I then cut out some strips to match the width of those sections I just cut off the walls, as well as little triangular base pieces which I beveled and attached to the bottom of each. Then I textured these like the rest of the piece and cut a slant off the top before gluing each of these onto the main base. This produced that star shape I wanted and it's pretty unique, but I still wanted to add a few extra little details. First, I took some of the off-cut MDF left over from the jigs and used this as a little border around the top before cutting some more thin strips of the nice XPS to clean up the edge of the wood and assembled this little piece to give the whole thing a nice clean top to build off of as we get to the next two stories. The second story was a lot simpler than the first, so I started by making some smaller walls in the same double-sided way as the first floor and then adding some windows into these. The run tricky thing here is that the jigs cut out anything beneath them, so I cut the wall sections where I wanted the windows to begin before sliding that section into the jig to cut out the arch. Then I added the stone detail, slid the 3D piece in, and then reattached the bottom section. To finish it up, I made four corner pieces by cutting out square strips of XPS foam, and then added two slanted foam core pieces to the bottom of each. This will eventually be used to support the roof sections I plan on adding to this part of the build. I then glued all these pieces together along with a quick floor panel I made out of more XPS. For the final floor, I wanted to mix it up again and started by cutting out even smaller walls to fit even smaller windows into in the same way as the last level. Then I broke out some wooden dowels I got from a little model set I found at the dollar store. I cut these to length and then glued them in as corners along with little XPF borders along the bottom. With the bulk of the build done, I then went on to the roof sections I mentioned before which I made by cutting out sections of cardstock from leftover food containers and use these to create the base of the roof. To get the nice triangular corners I wanted, I cut a rough piece and glued that on before cutting the whole thing flush with a knife afterwards. Then I want to try and make those Roman style rounded tile roofs. It took me a while to figure out an easy way for this, but I ended up grabbing some corrugated paper from Amazon. Ugh, I hate Amazon. As I thought the shape and scale would work out, and I couldn't find it anywhere else. So I cut out strips of this for the roof and also carefully cut through the corrugated part in equidistant lines in order to imply the separation of the tile so it didn't just look like sheets of corrugated metal or something. Honestly, this didn't really work and I had to do something else later on to bring that effect back, but we'll talk about that then. To clean up the edges, I added some long skewers I got at the dollar store in between the sections of paper to act as metal banding. Finally, I added some bricks to the base with some pieces of egg carton and sand, all glued down with watered down PVA. and then created a topper for the piece by cutting up a styrofoam ball and adding a couple of layers of XPS underneath it. And it looks pretty cool so far. And it was fun to use a mix of new materials and bits, so thanks for that, Albert. Also, as always, a big thank you out to my patrons whose support and patience makes all of this possible, as I don't know where I would be without you guys. In particular, a big shout out goes to our newest member, Bill B. Thank you so much. So now let's take the whole thing apart and get to painting. I wasn't 100% sure how to approach the painting, as I knew what I wanted but wasn't sure how to get there. But I started out in my normal way by creating a base coat primer with Mod Podge, 
but rather than going for a black gray i instead mixed in some brown to get a muted well brown tone to it in order to differentiate it from the usual gondor stuff that i've painted countless times now this went all over the piece in a couple of layers to give a nice opaque if slightly modeled look And it was here that I started to think a lot about just how I was going to paint the rest of this. As I said before, I wanted to base this around the look of Numenor from Rings of Power, so my usual techniques weren't really going to work. But despite that, I did try it anyways and hated the result, so I reprimed the whole thing again. Instead, I decided to go really simple for the main bricks and just dry brush the whole thing with a couple of layers of paint. The first being a light brown I made by mixing the base color with some off-white before applying a dry brush of pure off-white on top of that. In the meantime, I wanted to add some color and so started with blue as that is the main color you see in Numenor in the show. It also makes for a nice variation to all the colors I use from my various Arnorian factions implying that maybe a unified Arnor used the blue from Numenor, but was lost when the whole land split apart. I built up the colors by first applying a dark blue to the whole thing, before applying a lighter one along the top and just swishing them together in a really rough wet blend. I also picked out a few other details here, such as the door using some Skeleton Horde contrast paint, a few gold details with Retributor armor, and then the silver bits with Phileo Silver. Finally, the last element here was the roof bits, which I undercoated with a dark brown red, which I mixed up using, well, red, brown, and a bit of orange. Once that was dried, I started applying a couple of rounds of highlights by adding in more and more orange to that original color. I added this in tiny dots to imply the individual tiles as the slits I cut before really got lost in the layers of paint and primer. But I do think these highlighted elements really bring that idea back. Then I went around and picked out a few more spots of blue, as well as some extra gold elements such as the pillars and the dome, in order to make the whole thing a bit more consistent. And then we were done. I'm really happy with this piece in the end, as I feel like it is genuinely different from a lot of stuff I've done, particularly when it comes to the colors. I think it did end up coming out a bit too Numenor rather than Arnor, but overall it still works for me, and having these bits from Albert really helps bring it to life, so head over and check out his campaign. For now though, thanks for stopping by, and make sure you're subscribed as we have some more stuff coming up. I'm Anders, and stay safe everyone.